This is Who's Who Speaks with Mike Ryan. The Who's Who who speak on this program are former Men at Work singer-songwriter Colin Hay, Paul Hotobarki, and 2009 bestseller Crazy for the Storm, a memoir of survival, author Norman Olstad. Thirty years ago, Norman Olstad was in a horrific plane crash with his father in the San Gabriel Mountains. He was 11 years old and the only survivor. He now tells his true story, Crazy for the Storm, a memoir of survival. The book tells of Norman's terrible ordeal, his relationship with his father and the impact of his experiences on his life. Norman, great to see you. And how important are the words, never give up? Uh, it, never give up is everything. Mm. I mean, that's, that's what everything I did with my dad basically came down to never give up, mm -hmm. it seemed like. Um, so I think it was pretty easy to access that, uh, that idea because mm -hmm. we, we had sort of proved it out in our adventures together, mm -hmm. surfing and skiing. It wasn't just something he said, mm -hmm. it was something that, it was an idea and then we went and tested that idea and it proved to be true. Mm -hmm. If you didn't give up, mm -hmm. you, you captured a good wave or you stole a great little powder run in a storm because mm -hmm. uh, you were willing to hike and not give up. Mm -hmm. Is the book a, a memoir or is it a thriller? Well, it's both. but. Uh, I live my life as an adventure. Mm -hmm. my, that's how my father raised me. Mm -hmm. We were always on some adventure. So it follows that the book would read that way, mm. like a, a thriller or an adventure. Um, seems natural. When writing the book, did you actually find that it was creating all sorts of pain at the stage of writing? Or did that pain and those, those memories come back to you after? Um, well, it was very painful. The, the three to five hours that I spent writing every day mm -hmm. were not painful. Mm -hmm. The moment I finished writing and left my office, I would get a sore throat, mm -hmm. kind of get this like low-grade fever. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sleep and I had a headache and all this stuff. So I'd spend the rest of the day mm -hmm. recovering and rejuvenating so that the next day I would be alert and have mm -hmm. energy to go write. Cause it takes, for me, it takes a lot of energy to write. Going right back to, to prior to the, the accident, your father was, a, was an FBI agent, worked for... Um, uh, worked for uh, Jagger or, Hoover. Yeah, yes, the, the whole lot. So, <laughs> and I actually grew up with a... Uh, my father was a policeman too, so I knew how tough it can be. But at the same time, it teaches a certain disciplines. The same thing would have happened with you, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my father was an FBI agent, uh, but he, his style... If you read his book, Inside mm. the FBI, FBI, Inside the FBI, was very uh, loose. Mm. Um, he had an informant named Murph the Surf who we'd meet out in the Miami Surf. I love would exchange name. information. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's always a Murph the Surf in every town. It yeah. seems like, but um, there was another one at Topanga. But there was this notorious one, and um, they'd meet out in the surf and exchange information. But then my dad sort of hung out with Murph too, and they would kind of go out and party. <laughs> <laughs> And in fact, there's a story that my dad's good friend tells that Murph introduced my dad to this young woman, very beautiful mm -hmm. young woman, and my dad started dating her. After about a month, my father was called into the head office of the, at the FBI, the headquarters mm -hmm. there, and they said, you know, Olst, Agent Olstead, we have you on tape with the daughter of the head of the mafia mm -hmm. in Miami. And he said, oh, I'm just doing undercover work. It's all a part of it. <laughs> so he, he just had a way, he liked that kind of living on the edge thinking on his feet <laughs> but it's really interesting though because the, t the where you lived was a f you know very hippish mm -hmm. and you had um when you from your father being very strict to having the relaxed lifestyle was there like every night that he say i love it i hate it i love it i hate it i love it i hate it because it, it's it's it was, it was a, a contradiction to what he was doing right well but he was full of contradiction i mean he was kind of a renaissance man mm -hmm. he was an fbi agent he was a surfer, he was a skier, he played music, he was a child actor, mm -hmm. he, he loved to dance and sing. He wasn't really a drinker or wasn't into drugs or anything, but mm. he loved to you know, have a good time. Mm. And uh, at the same time, he had this other side to him where you know, he was in the FBI, then he worked for Robert Kennedy for the yes. Department of Justice mm -hmm. and um, Southern Pacific. So yeah, he had several contradictions. Mm. And even the, uh, it's interesting that I suppose when he was working, 
your aunt would look after you. Mm -hmm. And you had, who was it, Charles Manson was actually yeah. trying to croon your, your aunt. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's pretty bizarre. Yeah, well, Topanga was a wild place. Yeah. You know, everybody was down there. Musicians and actors, you know, kind of famous ones. Mass murderers. Yeah, mass murderers. At the time, he fit in, you know, Charles mm. Manson was like a hundred other guys, a big beard and a guitar yeah. singing. To women. Like all the other guys. Like all the other guys. And you know, some of the women too. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so it was just kind of a circus down there, but in the best sense. Mm. And um, I remember like rock and roll bands playing on the beach, yeah. right on the deck, and surfing and hearing live rock music just booming out Whoa. while I'm surfing mm. and looking in and seeing dogs and people with strange, one guy had a wild boar, one woman had a llama, um, you know, little parties going yeah. on, barbecues, rock bands, surfing. It was kind of all happening. <laughs>